Hello, Toastmasters and guests. Um, so, kind of just on the topic, I'll kind of go with uh, my most influential, I guess you call it, hero growing up. Um, so, I'm a huge Green Bay Packers fan. Um, and growing up, Brett Favre, I was obsessed with Brett Favre. Mm -hmm. And not just because he was a good quarterback on my favorite team, but he made everything he did fun. It looked fun to play football. There's some people when you watch sports, regardless of what it is, it looks like a job. He was out there kind of like a little kid running around. He would go and take hits and try and tackle people and just make ridiculous throws just because it's the fun thing to do. And I loved that because to me, a lot of people in life are too serious sometimes. And you have to take the things that you're doing, in my opinion, and enjoy them. And that makes my life better. So I really think he was a huge influence on my life on anything that I've done because even in a situation where it's something I might not want to do, I try to make it fun. Because sometimes you have to, you're, you're put in those spots. But then also, when you're going out and doing something that is fun, remembering why you're doing it and that you're there to have fun and trying to show that. And so uh, he was probably the most influential person in my life. Thank you. Guests, guests, go ahead. Any guests? Andre, go! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can't, you throw it out there, man. You gotta go. <laughs> Lakers, and as a, as a player, he exemplified fun. He was he made the NBA, which was on its way out of being shut down. Him, then Larry Bird, took their time and battled throughout the 80s. Kind of dated myself there. Uh, battled throughout the 80s to make the, the league fun again. It was Los Angeles, it was Boston, it was in, in many ways, growing up in my youth, it was uh, black community versus white community, and that's the way that they saw those two teams. But the one thing that was really fun about those, those uh, individuals is that they took their time to rebuild a brand and made it fun for everyone to watch. Um, with Magic, everything was exciting. He you know, had these very colorful interviews and things when, when I was a kid, I was like, I was giving myself mock interviews. Andre, what would you like to do? And have very expressive facial expressions, which you guys all who know me, I very much have these faces I make quite often. <laughs> um, but as a hero, the one thing that I learned about later on in life was Magic, when he, was con when he contracted HIV um, and his career came to an end, I saw something other than the sports side. I saw the philanthropist. I saw the man who gave back to the community and did everything he possibly could to make it a better place for where he lived and called home. Um, and that is for myself, one of the things, being a hero, I wanted to always give back to my community any way possible. And so one day when I make millions and millions of dollars, we'll see if that happens, I'll give back to my community even more so. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, just took it. Thank you for sharing something that's influential. Do we have any guests that would like to step up and talk off the... There we go. Yeah. 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 Y
uh, politics and you know you have like local heroes. But today uh, it's actually 150th anniversary of Mahatma and this is what I'll talk about. So when I was a kid, uh, I used to be very happy on October 2nd because it was a holiday in my school and he was a guy on the currency and I used to be happy when I used to get currency from my parents. But uh, when I grew up and I read a lot about him, so he was a very remarkable person who built very simple methods, you know, to do a very uh, extraordinary thing of forming the minds of people. So like, there was a big mighty system, they said, okay, you can't make salt, you have to import it from our, our country, and what he said to him, so you are a friend, but the thing is, it's not acceptable to me. What I go is, I just go to the sea and make salt. And a lot of people came in with him and made salt. So the mighty system, they saw like, we made a law. We are importing the, importing the salt, but these people are making their own. And I can't just, and what, how to enforce the law is by fear. And this guy is removing fear from the mind. So the thing is, what the message he brings is, the change starts from the mind. So when, uh, and also from the management perspective, so there are two types of managers. You can be manager by authority and manager by influence. So the message that I get from is, if you become a manager by influence, you'll be a lot more successful and great than manager by authority. Thank you. Very good. I'm glad that you followed on the introduction I made and shared a little bit more insight as well as important. Thank you. We have time for one more table topic. And as a speaker, when you're looking back toward the timer, you'll see a green light. It means you hit your time. You'll see a yellow light. This is a reminder. That's time to think about how do I wrap this up. And a red light is time to wrap. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. Someone else? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So continuing on the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, I'd like to talk about our current Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, whom I had the privilege of going and seeing him talk live at Houston two weeks back. Mm -hmm. And to tell you about this event, this was the biggest ever event by a foreign state of head in the United States. Over 55,000 people attended his, uh, it, it was in the Energy Stadium in Houston that it was largely filled to capacity. There were 30 more thousand people waiting outside uh, for him and so this is the influence that he has brought to India. Now why I am talking about this is I used to be his, uh, I used to hate him like five years back. He, he has been accused of, uh, I would say, uh, you know, influencing writing in India. A long time back, nothing has been proven, but what he has done, done for India is phenomenal. He has brought a huge name to India, outside of India. Imagine 50, 60,000 people coming in and listening him live. There were senators of 30 states who wanted to just shake hands with him. There, was, there are CEOs of all top 500 S&P uh, companies who want to uh, start business in India. That is the difference that he has made in the just five or six years that he has been prime minister. He's removed a lot of bureaucracy, uh, a lot of corruption from India. We haven't had a scam reported in five years. We used to have a scam reported probably, two scams reported each day before he came in. That, that's how bad <laughs> uh, we were. Uh, so he's been a huge motivation for me in my life. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Amen. Medium walk. All right. So I uh, was filling out 
provided notes on the first speakers, so I didn't hear all the instructions on who exactly we had to pick as a hero. Um, but I'm going to pick my mom as my hero. Um, and I think back to, I've been married um, seven and a half years now. And I think back to, to my wedding day, and definitely one of the, the happiest days of my life. But um, one of the interesting things is, it also marked um, an interesting time for, for my family, particularly for my mom. Uh, a couple of months after I got married, my mom became really sick. And she went to all sorts of doctors and specialists, and no one could figure out what was going on, going on with her. So we were really concerned. This went on for you know, months and months and months, uh, dragged into you know, a year or two before um, they were able to kind of find a specialist who could figure out what was wrong with her. What they found out was that she has a, an autoimmune disorder called lupus. Some of you may be familiar with that, where um, it, it attacks different parts of your body, right? So like her joints, et cetera. So she's, what it means for her is she's uh, always tired, pretty much always in pain, and it's really um, been hard to see, right? Growing up, my mom has always been one of my heroes, you know, just being someone that's very active, very encouraging, whether it was in academics or sports or um, faith or what, whatever it is, she's been a very encouraging, involved person in my family and in the community. So seeing her go from someone that was, you know, so active, so engaged to um, being really hurting and in pain all the time, what was really hard to see. And what's what I admire even more about her is seeing how she's handled that and, and tried to turn it into a positive, where even though she may be more limited in terms of her physical abilities, she still goes out of her way to be encouraging, to be supportive to her family and community. So those are some of the things that I, I really admire about my mom. That's why she's my hero. Oh.